Friends and partners of Jubilee Christian Center. Hey everybody, I'm Dick Brunell. This is my partner in the Word, Pastor Larry Huggins. And Larry, I feel that we ought to dive into a very familiar portion of the scripture, Mark 11. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever, have you ever said, man, my bills are stacking up like a mountain or I, I got a mountain of problems. It's, it's one of those metaphors of big problems big problems if something's big it's usually it's a mountain it's a mountain and there's a situation in in mark 11 that i want to i'm going to talk about i want to start with the fig tree now this mark 11 starts off with uh palm sunday which oh, yeah. we had recently but larry as you know as jesus is walking down the mount of olives and i've i've, I've done that 12 13 times Bethany walked down the Mount of Olives into the old city through the, through the graveyards, and you see, the, of course, the Golden Dome now and, and all those iconic... Yeah, the Eastern Gate. The Eastern Gate. And it says, now the next day, this was the day after the original Palm Sunday, so it'd be Monday. The next day, when they had came out from Bethany, where, you know, Jesus had a kind of a holiday in, it was Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, that's where he... Yeah. You know, it's interesting, they weren't, they weren't like disciples but they were his like best friends. Yeah. Three of them, probably all single, uh, somewhat wealthy, and they, they, they were more than happy to feed, they had the gift of hospitality, to feed and house him and his uh, 12. Yeah, his entourage. So obviously they had, they had some, some worth and, and some uh, uh, you know, wealth, if you will, to take care of them. So they spent the night uh, after Jesus had Come into, the, uh, come into the city. It says he went into the temple. This is interesting. That he went into the temple and looked around at all things and went back to Bethany. Now this is a little take I'm going to yeah. add to this. You're, you're building it. You're I'm building, building your Here case. we go. Here we go. <laughs> it says he was hungry. I have a uh, thing that what he saw in the temple so sickened him that he couldn't eat maybe dinner or or breakfast oh, yeah cuz what he that, saw i think made him spiritually that's plausible, yeah, sick it's, yeah. it's it's an opinion it's whatever it's worth well i i think everybody's probably been so disgusted with something they lost their appetite yeah and seen from afar a fig tree having leaves and then supposing supposing it, it had something on it for him to eat i learned something when i went to israel years ago the, the fig trees in Israel, there, it's the fruit that needs direct sunlight okay. to, uh, for the sugars and for the fruit to mature. But then, so it doesn't overripen, it, it quickly puts forth a leaf. And okay. they call the leaf there the hand of God because it looks like a hand. I actually brought some home, and it's a little bit bigger than a hand, and they call it the hand of God. Wow. The, the, the locals. Well, that, so, that adds something more to that story. Exactly. And... Uh, Fig leaves in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Trying so, to cover up something. Trying to create a religion. Trying mm -hmm. to atone for their, their, own, their, their own mess. So here you have the normal healthy fig tree. It puts forth the, these big beautiful figs. Direct hot sunlight from the Middle East. But then the leaf shades it to mm -hmm. slow down the sugars mm -hmm. and the maturing of the fruit. So Jesus seen from afar tree having leaves. And he assumed it would, it should have fruit. It's supposed to have fruit. But when he gets there, the Bible says, when he comes to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs. So for some reason, that tree had fake promise, but no performance. Yeah. It was promising something, yeah. fruit. But when he got there, he found nothing but leaves. Now remember the day before 
when he went to the temple, and from a distance, the temple looked holy and righteous. Had the leaves. The temple did. The temple did. But he found no fruit no of fruit. righteousness. I'm, I'm glad you said that because I've always believed that he, that was a metaphor for uh, the fig leaf was for the temple. Exactly. I think this tree, this tree. He wasn't mad at the tree. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he, he, but he was going to. Everything Jesus did, I think, everything Jesus did was a teaching tool for his disciples. And we'll get into that in just a moment. He, uh, in response, he said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's not a happy camper. Yeah. The day before, he sees his father's house, mm -hmm. a den of thieves, money changers, uh, people going to the market, taking a shortcut through the temple instead of walking around the temple. I mean, it was, it was like a flea market and, and people lining their pockets, priests, men, men of God lining their pockets uh, from these poor people that had been under Roman rule for hundreds of years or whatever. So Jesus is hungry. Now let's talk about spiritual hunger. Yeah. He's yeah. hungry and he's excited because he sees something that's supposed to fulfill his hunger and take care uh, of a need and yet he gets there and he finds nothing but leaves and what does he do? He curses the fig tree and it's interesting the disciples heard him. I wonder what the disciples were saying, what, what's he doing? He's talking to a tree. He's mad at a tree, not all fig trees, but he's upset because you don't eat the leaves. And what good is a fig tree? I mean, yeah, the birds can nest, could be a little shade. You can use the wood later. But a fig tree was created by God for one thing, figs. Figs. The others are non-essentials. So they came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple and he began to drive out who bought and sold in the temple, overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those. I mean, he is kicking some religious, you know what here. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares to the temple again, like a flea market. No. Then he taught them saying, is it not written? My house should be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. And of course he, uh, a big brouhaha. This is, this is when the, the Pharisees said, we got to kill this guy. This guy, this guy has been crossing the line. This is it. This is it. We got to, we got to do away with him. Now the next morning, which would be Tuesday morning, as they're again coming down the hill, <laughs> I like this. Peter remembering said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away like supernaturally. I mean, it was like double dead. This thing was really dead. It wasn't a slow death. That could have been like yeah. petrified looking. And it shocked Peter. He, he, yeah. he, it shocked him, Rabbi. And Jesus gives the most interesting answer. Have faith in God. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. What? Okay, we'll talk faith later. Yeah, you just talked to a tree, killed it. You just, yesterday, we heard you, Master. We heard you. And you were upset, and you were talking to the tree. And now today the tree's dead. What's up? Jesus goes, have faith in God. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I okay. see the point. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I have faith, what, but, like, like, Lord, okay, I, got, I have, I have a, the series on faith. I'm reading a bit book on uh -huh. faith. I've taken a course on faith. Yeah. Why did you kill this fig tree? And as you know, uh, the translation here isn't exact. It's have the faith of God. Yeah, have the God kind of faith. Have the God, there you go, have the God kind of faith. And then he gives this teaching for Assuredly, he's got the guys listening now. He's got their attention. Mm -hmm. Now watch. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever, whoever, which includes you ever, me ever, us ever, mm -hmm. whoever says to this mountain, what mountain? Well, it's the Mount of Olives. What mountain are they on? The Mount uh, of Olives. Oh, yeah. Whoever says to this mountain right here, be removed. That's interesting. Be cast into the sea, Mediterranean, not that far away. Mm -hmm. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say, now watch. 
whoever says, now I say. So he's, he's giving. Making it first person. Giving it first person. It's, it's, a, it's a principle. It's a law that he's going to enact himself. Whoever says, watch. I'm a whoever. I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe them and you shall receive, receive them and you shall have them. We'll, we'll, we'll move on in just a moment. So, Larry, uh, unwrap this a little bit. He, he's, he's using this tree that had, again, it had promise from a distance, but when you get close, there's no performance. The temple from a distance, from the Mount of Olives looking quarter mile or little, it, it looked like you see the smoke of the altar, you see, you see the lambs, you see the people, and it looked like... Yeah, it looked good. Until he got there. Yeah. And started parting the branches of religion and found nothing. Yeah, no fruit. To satisfy the hunger of a soul. And so he's going to, he's going to use this as a teaching, teaching example 2,000 years ago, which was applicable, applicable today. So and how, do you, how do you see this? Gosh, I mean, you're, you're giving me some brand new things to think about. But uh, um, I'll put this out here. It, it may, I hope it, hope it fits somehow. But, you know, if you think about it, uh, to get saved, God gave us a measure of faith. He's given unto us a measure of faith. He gave it. Right. It's like Book of Romans. Yeah, yeah I, I say unto you, you're going to have faith to get saved. And um, the way we got saved was we believed it in our hearts. We said it with our mouths. Right. So I know that Jesus is not just thinking faith. Jesus is speaking faith. Right. Right. And it's two places, in the heart and in the mouth. mouth. Heart, mouth, confession. Heart, mouth, confession. Believe it in your heart, say it with your mouth. So he's demonstrated that. He said to the fig tree, he didn't just, you know, put some negative vibes out there like you, you know, I'm thinking bad thoughts about you right now, you fig tree. He was saying, and he said, now you can do the same thing. Right. So here was my thought. Do you think he's imparting a gift of faith at that moment? He's using his faith to activate their faith? Well, that's a good point. Kind of, that, that's what I'm saying. It just, I don't know, maybe I'm having a revelation. Maybe it's a, And not only that. I'm it, hungry. It's, it's faith, isn't, faith isn't just something you believe. Faith is something you say and do. It's an action. It's an action. Pro, see, faith, faith, is a, faith is a noun. It's an it's a adjective and a verb. There's faith can be a thing. Sure, yeah. But it's also... The faith. But then it's, it's, it's uh, being faithful mm. is descriptive. Yeah. And moving in faith is the verb that gives action to a sentence, as, as you know. So what I see here a little bit, Larry, is watch now. He says, for surely I say mm -hmm. whoever says. Mm -hmm. I say whoever says. Then he's going to give a... He's going to give a little example to this mountain, to this problem, this mountain. This mountain, this mountain can be a problem. I, yeah. can't, I can't get from point A to point B because there's too big of a mountain. Maybe a mountain of debt. Mountain of debt, a mountain of sickness. Uh, uh, a, a, my problems marriage, mounting up. Prob my marriage problems are mounting, like Himalaya mounting up. So what he's doing is he's teaching us how to remove mountains. Mountains. So he says, whoever says, that includes you and I, I believe, to this mountain, whatever your mountain is, whatever yeah. my mountain is, uh, be removed, cast into the sea. Interesting, if I may, a little, a little addendum here. When Jesus went to heaven, where did he leave from? Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives. Acts, right? When he comes back, Mount of Olives. What's gonna, what, what does the Bible say is going to happen to that mountain? It's going, going to split. And into the sea. Mm -hmm. The mountain is going to split. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he just prophesied. What was going to happen? What was going to happen when he returns, the wow. second advent. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Interesting, huh? Watch now. But watch. And a lot of people, a lot of Bible teachers, and I've done this, we've just, we, we preach a whole sermon on, on verses 22, 23, 24, and we yeah, talk about faith. And we keep, don't but, use the context. But keep going, because it's still in red. And a conjunction, he's connecting two thoughts here. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, a mountain. A mountain of unforgiveness, mm -hmm. mountain of bitterness. An obstacle. An obstacle. 
It's, it's clogging up your spirit. Mm -hmm. You're asking God to bless you and you're cursing, you're hating, you're, you're, you're talking, you're gossiping. You're never going to forgive and this person. And it's keeping you get, getting from where you are to where you want to go. Because there's this mountain of, of gall or bitterness. Yeah. And Jesus knows things are going to happen in the future to these men where they're going to be tempted. Sure, yeah. Because life happens. Yeah. So watch. Whenever you stand praying, you have anything against anyone, forgive him or her, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses, which I'm sure, like mine, are a mountain. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. So he's connecting, he's connecting forgiveness to this great lesson on faith because there are people, it's almost impossible to forgive because of their egregious act against us or a family member or, or where it's like, I want them to burn in hell. They need to go to the gas chamber or, or whatever. And yet Jesus said, if you really want to remove mountains in your life, then you got to get rid of gotta, mountains in your life. Yeah, yeah, you got to got to forgive Yeah, you can't just you can't just talk to a mountain and so I can get from here to here, here here's a promise here's receiving the promise I need I need to get my healing I need to get I need to get my 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 my, my blessing I, I need to pay my bills uh, I need this I need that and and Jesus said whoa stop I'm I'm telling you how to speak to the mountain but the first mountain you need to speak to is the fruitless fig tree and you need to curse it you need, just like I killed that fig tree from the roots up, you need to kill unforgiveness from the roots up. So thou, now you can have what you say. I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, but okay. not now. You, you, you raised a question for me, and I think you can answer it. So, But it's uh, not now. A little, oh. bit, <laughs> little, bit, little bit later. Did you notice the dramatic pause? So I'm, later. Okay, well, all right. Well, can, do, do, oh, by the, by the way, while he's thinking of the question, and I'm going to hopefully have an answer. <laughs> the next few weeks, uh, I just did a series on... Uh, I was thinking, when are we going to eat? No, I, I, I do have a question, I'm a Bible the question. Thing. There's no food back here. <laughs> well, Jesus was hungry. I'm listening. Jesus was hungry. The next few weeks, we're, we're going to go back to the sanctuary on Sunday morning where I did a series, Gone Fishing. Uh, I've been fishing since I was five years old. In fact, while you're watching this, him and I are probably fishing in Alaska. But we need, Jesus said, and I'm already praying about this. I'm forgiving everybody in my life. No mountains are going to keep me from catching fish. Amen. Amen. And we have a, a great, it'll be for a few weeks of, of how do we catch, how do we become fishers of men in Silicon Valley, Northern California, anti-church, liberal, all that. How do we reach people with the beautiful gospel of Christ? and not wrap it in religion and a bunch of stuff that yeah. just turns people off. So next week, be sure to, be sure to watch. All right, so this, Larry, to this, this, uh, this, this whole chapter 11, especially from, from verse 1 down to verse 25, it's, it's fascinating. You have this, this Palm Sunday triumphal entry, riding, riding the donkey, which was prophesied that the king would come humble, lowly, unlike Alexander the Great, who was centuries before Christ, the, great, the greatest conqueror, arguably, in the world, who rode, a, he rode his big stallion, and, and the, the king of the conquered city would have to come and bow mm -hmm. and, and take the wreath. Jesus, the king of kings, doesn't ride a stallion. Oh, he does the book of Revelation, by the way. That's later. He rides lowly and humble, and they wave the palm leaves. And, but he goes, see, the zealots wanted him to go into the, to the uh, headquarters, kick out Pilate, uh, and, and kick, uh, no, he goes to the temple. He, he doesn't go to the palace. He goes to the temple. He's not a political figure. He's, uh, he's the Messiah. And, and everybody like, here, uh, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he, the son of David, our new king. Go kick Pilate. Go kick Herod. Go, go kick all these idiots. Get, kick Rome out and establish the kingdom of David. And Jesus makes a right turn. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of going left, he makes a right turn yeah. and goes to the temple and doesn't do anything on Sunday. He looks around. Yeah. Gets sick to his stomach, I think. Goes back. And then he starts moving on Tuesday and the rest of the week. And, of course, gets arrested, beaten, and crucified on that Friday. In a way, that was the beginning of the end of temple worship. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah, corresponding to cursing that fig tree, something b began to happen, and we know at the crucifixion, the veil was ripped. Right, right. And, and of course, uh, 70 A.D. Uh, Titus, the Romans sacked it, sacked the temple, and all we got left now is the Western Wall, which is beautiful. Still, I enjoy going there and praying. Uh, some people call it the Wailing Wall, which the Jews hate, by the way. I found that out the hard way. Uh, the Western Wall. And, yeah, so all, all they got left is a few stones. Uh, so it was, it was the beginning of the end of temple, mm -hmm. of temple worship. But you have a question? Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned the book of Revelation, and you know a lot more about that book than I do. I'm, I'm just not a... I read it a few times, uh, but um, I, I do have a question. There's a scripture, help me with it, that says the mountains are removed. Yeah. That's in a future age, right? right, right. The right. millennial age or the new earth, when is that? Well, the new, the new heaven, new earth, that's interesting because the book of Revelation is so symbolic and full of metaphors. I think sometimes when we take things literal when the Holy Spirit, through the hand of John or whatever, wrote it, uh, obstacles removed. Yeah, that's I, what I'm getting at right yeah, there. Obstacles removed. Uh, so, so imagine a time. Right. Yeah. No obstacles. Millennial. Well, there's, well, and, you know, this fascinates me. Uh, Satan's going to be bound for a thousand years. Oh, yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> and really, I don't get the release part. I get the bound part. Well, from the, the, the thousand year reign, people like you and I who, died and now we are in our glorified state in eternal but there's going to be people still born yep be mortals and immortals there's on the going earth. to be morals and immortals and some of the immortals are going to turn against christ amazing it's amazing now if the devil's bound and demons it has to be their flesh because our enemy is the world the flesh of the devil yeah. so it's not demonic uh suggestion temptation it's just carnal flesh like who does he think he is why do I have to bow to him? Hmm. Why, I, I want to live my own life. And there's going to be, he's got, and then he's going to be released at the end of the thousand year reign and then the final, the final conflict and then him and the hellbound are, are erased from memory. Uh, you know, it's fascinating to me. Uh, the Bible says that we who, are, we who are saved will rule and reign with Christ. Does that just mean on the earth? I don't think so. I think it's Psalm 8 that says that, that what is man that thou art mindful of him, the mm -hmm. son of man that you visit him, mm -hmm. that you're going to put him over all your creation? Yeah. Well, isn't, isn't the, yeah, stars and the, the, the galaxies, mm -hmm. the solar systems, the universe, yeah, yeah. did God not create all that? Yeah. Well, who's going to rule and reign all, over all, all the that? Works, all the works of God. Earth will be the center. Somebody said, you believe in UFOs? Well, yeah, there's angels and sure, demons, yeah. and all kinds of things out not, there. Not, not the uh, cable TV type. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, uh, let's if there is, we're going to rule and reign over them. Just I want to let you know right now if you're watching. I want to bring up this thing with the mountains again because you're helping yeah. me. Okay. Um, I don't know what this is called, but there's a type of graph that's like a, a 3D representation of data. Yeah. Uh, say a population map, and you've seen them where it looks like a horizon, like a flat plane, and then the population graph rises yeah. up out of it like a mountain. Right, right. So uh, we could do a, we could do a graph like that for sicknesses, you know, right. outbreak of a right. of a infectious disease. We could see it as a as a mountain right. on a map. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, imagine having no outbreaks and no mountains of bad data in our life. Well, that's so, paradise, man. So, that's well, in the, in the book of Revelation, yeah, it's going to happen, but that will be done on earth. It is in heaven. I don't think, here's what I'm getting at. I don't think God wants us to live with mountains. He wants us to come right. against mountains. Well, even, even there's prophecies in the Old Testament that the mountains will be brought down. The valleys will be brought up. So the, the, the downtrodden, mm -hmm. uh, you know. The high and mighty. The, high and the, the proud, the high and the mighty are going to be and the, the downtrodden be brought up to where, you know, God, God, you know, I don't believe God creates man equal. I believe God loves everybody equally because God did not create David equal with somebody we never heard of. I mean, there's anointings put on people. Uh, so it, I don't think, I think man is loved equally by God, but God, God 
picks yeah. people to do great things. Well, we talk about that from a civil point of view that we have equal rights and so Well, that's forth. true. That's true. For but that's true. Uh, under the law, we're supposed to be supposed to be equal. But no, I mean, how can a person who's born with a congenital birth defect be no. compared to an uh, Olympian? It, no. it, it, they're no. not equal physically. Not. Or, you know, someone with a superior intelligence. One of the words that I have for heaven, and I, I've used it all my adult life, is the land of no horizons. Well, I like that. Yeah. And another word that's an older word is Beulah land. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that. And, and uh, I'm thinking as you're talking about this and Jesus saying, now listen, you get rid of the mountains in your life and I'm going to give you faith to get rid of mountains. And if you forgive people and get rid of those mountains, you can have uh, the land of no horizons. Yeah. You can have this, no end. this uh, and nothing isn't between it, we're you. We're just about out of time, but isn't it funny how church people can have all this, uh, you know, don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't do this. But boy, they will, they will curse somebody that fast. Yeah, and criticize, criticize gossip. Criticize and gossip and, and think that's okay because, you know, me and Jesus were tight. Hey, we got more to talk about in shows to come. Again, catch us next week right here at Jubilee with uh, Gone Fishing. There's fish that are hungry for the kingdom of God right here in Northern California. We need to present an attractive bait, the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. He's Larry Huggins, I'm Dick Burnell. We'll see you right here next week. God bless everybody. I started fishing when I was five years old, walking down to Pinto Lake and watching the older boys, their dads, grandpas. I made my own rod, line, grandma's safety pins, I turned into hooks and I dug worms out of her garden and I learned how to catch bluegill and crappie. Every now and then, got lucky enough to catch a little bass. I grew up loving to fish, I've been blessed to have fish pretty much all over the world. When I came to Christ and I saw in the Gospels where he said, I will make you fishers of men, he was talking to professional fishermen, Peter, his brother, a couple of the other fellows who lived basically in a fishing village. And they were good at what they did. They, they knew how to use the nets, a pole. They knew how to catch fish in the Galilee. I will make you fishers of men. I'm gonna start a new series. We're gonna call this Gone Fishing. Let's go fishing. Thank you for watching Jubilee with Dick Bernal. If you'd like to contact us, visit our website at jubilee.org.